we are back along to the Linda East Show on Pulse 88, sponsored by Supermall. The sounds there of Steph London, Sean Paul, Wiley and Bolsey. That pack, I think it's going to go down in history as being one of the biggest bangers of this year. But anyways, I have some special guests, which I promised you. And I've got some special guests in the building right now. Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> do you know what? I'm actually going to let you guys do my job. Can you introduce yourselves, actually? <laughs> Ladies first, anyways. Okay. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Chantal Jackson and I am one of the lead actresses in Sprint Talk. Yo! And my name is Rod Dale and I'm the producer of Sprint Talk. Yo! So guys, Sprint Talk. It's looking like it's gonna be, like when I saw the trailer, it reminded me almost of like Cool Runnings, that kind of impact that it had then. I feel like this film has the capacity to do the same thing. So can you tell me a bit about the film, just first and foremost? Yeah, well, you know, The Voice actually had a great quote last week about oh. us. It said, a film that has the feel-good factor of 90s hit film Cool Runnings. No way! And the cinematic appeal of the classic Harder They Come. Hey, see? Uh, 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 hey, uh, uh, hey, uh, uh, <laughs> 100%. Because as soon as I saw it, I really just feel like it just reminded me of that kind of, yeah! But, you know, the story is about a young boy whose mom leaves to go to America on a two-year work visa yeah. when he's seven years old. Yeah. Ten years later, she has to return because her staying illegally in America and providing money and sending cash back to the family is what's keeping them afloat back yeah. in Jamaica. Yeah. And so, ten years later, she sends her son a pair of sneakers and says, I want you to try and make the junior national track team and compete in this race so you can come and I'll come see you if you make it to the team and make it to America. So it's the journey of him trying to make the team and the ups and downs of him becoming a celebrity athlete. Yeah. Chantal's trying to keep him grounded. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> so there's a phenomenon called the barrel picnic phenomenon. Okay. And uh, you know, barrels are everywhere in the house in yeah. Jamaica because people are sending barrels of food, yeah. clothes, money, and this is how the family survives. Yeah. And Chantal was actually a barrel picnic. Yeah, so, which is one of the reasons why the film is so important to me. I mean, outside of it not being a stereotypical Jamaican mm -hmm, film, mm -hmm. you know, these are real stories that real Caribbean people face every day, you know? And so I was a barrel picnic. Dale, the lead actor, was yeah. also a barrel picnic. We still are barrel picnic, <laughs> you know, because my mother still has to travel to work. Yeah. His parents are still overseas, mm -hmm. you know, so... Um, having to deal with a parent not being there, not giving you that kind of attention that you require, especially a teenager, yeah. dealing with oh, peer yes. pressure and yeah. all that. And then sprinting is, I mean, when I did this film, yeah. I, I appreciated sprinters way <laughs> more. The <laughs> amount of, crazy. listen, the amount of work you have to put in the change of diet, listen, I eat crap. I <laughs> see Burger King, no, I, can't tell you. I preach it. I had to change my diet, there was, Gym in the morning, then training in the evening. You no. know what I mean? And I'm just pretending to be an athlete. So imagine the real athlete. No. But the thing is, you didn't have to do, do that much for your role, but the fact you've taken it that far, yeah. that's a lot of dedication, you know? Of course, because I don't believe in acting. You know, yeah. I don't want to use that word. I believe yeah. in becoming. And you want to tell a genuine story, yeah. and so you become this person. Yeah. And it was very important for me and for the, the rest of the cast to tell this story because we wanted it to be as authentic as yeah. possible. Yeah. The director and the producers wanted it to be, to be as authentic as possible, and so we went all in. And I just appreciate the fact that we're telling this kind of story. This is my story. This is, I mean, we we've taken this film to several places across the world, and everyone can relate because the immigration thing is, yes. you know, such a big topic. And even last night, a mother got up and she's like, "This is my story. I had to leave my kids." It happens everywhere, and so I'm glad we're able to tell those stories uh, through the eyes of a teenager who is struggling with this kind of issue. Thing is, obviously, the story in itself is one thing. But what attracted you to your character? Why was it you like, you know what, I need to be this character? Because it's the, to well not the total opposite of me, but like, <laughs> I've always wanted to be an athlete. Yeah. I'm not athletic in the least. Really? So I was like, okay, at least now I can pretend to be an athlete and I can look like one. So yeah. I was excited about the form yeah. and, you know, learning the different techniques and stuff. And plus, it was my first film. Yeah. So I'm, oh, yes, yes, because yes, I'm a theater actress. Um, film is really now becoming more prominent in Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. We're more, uh, we're more dominant in theater. Yeah. So I was excited about the fact that I was approached to do film. That's the first thing. And then of course there's you saying bold in it. Then <laughs> Jada and Will Smith, our executive producer. There was a that so much things. Exactly. I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you asking all? Like, <laughs> yeah. You know. So I was just very excited to take it.
it on and of course whatever opportunity I get to grow and develop in my craft I grab it so I was you know I was just ready and I was like storm is this okay is this okay <laughs> I, I mean the producers were exceptional yeah. I just I mean from 2016 Rob and I have been on this journey and I'm so Amazing. grateful for them and I'm just grateful for the opportunity that everybody is seeing it now you know yeah. this yeah. story needs to be told See, and now that's, that's what, when you say it's your first film, my eyes were like, huh? Because I've seen you in another film. That was after. See, that's yeah. crazy. So, Yardi, I saw you in. Mm-hmm. And I actually had a sat down, I said, I'm with her then. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> oh, but it just shows you the timelines of projects. And I think it reminds people about patience mm-hmm. because nothing happens overnight. So, the fact that this, this story started from 2016. No one started before it. When did no. it start? Yeah, I, so Storm came up, gave me, told me the idea in 2014. Stop it. And we started working on the script in December of 2015. And then three months later, I was working on a separate project for Will and Jada's team, yeah. editing what's now like their social media. Yeah, and yeah. And they were on a trip in Dubai, and I was cutting footage together. And when I finished that assignment, they said, Rob, what are you working on? And I said, you know, my buddy Storm and I have been working on this script, and I yeah. gave them the script on a Tuesday, and on the Wednesday, they're like, yo, Jada wants to do this. That's Stop like, it! Yeah. So you the plug. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm like, oh, the guy. I was like, okay, <laughs> how easy that was someone, you take this, and, but hold on, how, how involved were they in this project? Because um, what, is, what is an executive producer? So executive producers in film can really do anything. Cool. Uh, they have two guys on their team, Jamal Watson and Clarence Hammond, who are like our day-to-day point people. Okay. But this is project was really important to Jada. They've gotten into supporting indie film yeah. in the last three years. A lot of our this, this our project was their first experiment with independent no film. Way. Yeah. So they came to Jamaica, not Will and Jada. Their team came to Jamaica yeah, yeah, yeah. for the duration of the shoot. And then we got to live and work out of their offices and spaces on the Sony studio lot. So Chantal came and she was just like, you know, this, this like because there's a picture of Sydney Poitier in oh, my oh, basement, and I literally so had my well. sneak, I had my Jordans up on Will's desk every Stop day, that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we edited there for like the last year and a half until the film was ready. Yeah, I mean, we were literally just running around their office. Storm and I were just getting to one shop. That is just yeah. so real. We would walk in and just wave to everybody. That is so, stop it. That is she like, took a post. She, took, she was like, take, we went to Sundance when she was at the party yeah. and she got to, we were hanging out with Jada the whole time, so. No, do you know what? Like, yeah. is this life? Like, Listen, I went into a sound studio. Now, I've never been into a sound studio. Yeah. And they took me, uh, they, they gave me a tour of the Sony studios in LA and I was in this massive studio and they were like, you know, this is where they shot the first Wizard of Oz. Hey, like, there's no place like home. Listen, this is where they shot like um, Batman. Listen, I just stood there, my eyes, I was so teary and I'm like, listen, you're telling me, my mouth is like, you know, it's so overwhelming, but what was, the, they stopped me in the middle of the, the song studio, Jamal stopped me and he said, let me tell you something very important. Mm. We, people in Hollywood, we will choose people. You see, if you have a good attitude, yeah. great work attitude, yeah. We will work with you rather than somebody who's exceptionally talented, yeah. but you can't, you know. Yeah. Work and you can't this work girl, she gets it right every time. Oh. She actually makes the job of a producer and director very hard because we have to basically try to get everyone to meet her level. Oh. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> stop it! Stop it! Well, listen, I want to play a little track now, and I've got more to try and get out of you of this. I'm trying to get as much as I can, maybe even like some um, sneak preview. Uh, exclusives? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Say no more. Right, you are back. We are here talking all things Sprinter. All things Sprinter. Now, guys, what you said to me already has been unreal with regards to, you know, it's Will and Jada and just the whole experience. But have you seen the final? Obviously, I'm, I'm, presu- I'm presuming you've seen the final version of the film. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Several times. Okay, just checking, just checking. <laughs> Were you happy of how it came out with the end product? With the end product? The first time I saw it, I cried. I really? Was with, yeah, I was with my, we were in Miami, and I was sitting beside um, one of the actors, Kadeem Wilson, who he's the brother mm-hmm. and the manager, and we just, Thank we you. cried, because it was so, it was so refreshing yeah. to see that kind of story coming out, and it was, there was triumph, and mm-hmm. it was just so beautiful to see, and I mean, the race, and 
Like my favorite scene is the very last scene. Oh, but you how they edited it. You, you can't tell me what the very last no, scene is. No, I can't. I know. Have to see. So you have to see. But it was. It, I I think I I was very overwhelmed because it was my story. Yeah. It was. I mean. Most of the persons in the audience, I mean, they came up to us. Dale's father, yeah. the lead actor, he was in the audience, and at the end of it, he said to him, You remember, my always I tell you, I'm going to file for you, I'm going to file for you, so you can come, and I never got the opportunity. I mean, Sprinter is the reason why Dale uh, reunited with both his parents. Are you serious? After what, 10 yeah. years and 17 serious? years, you know? Yeah. So it's a, it's just a beautiful journey that we've been on with this production. And so I'm just, I was just very overwhelmed. His mom left him in Jamaica when he was five and he didn't see her again until February of this year. year. When we screened at the in Vietnam. London. So, honestly, yeah. because that can be like that. now I'm feeling teary because you know as as you mentioned earlier, it is an immigrant story. You know, it's it's it's, it's a kind of thing where a lot of us who may not originate from particular countries know that our family members go to places like the US or go to the UK to make a better life for us. And just to hear the story now, I, I and honestly, people don't I realize in the Caribbean it's seen as a positive. Yeah. You know, early on when we were trying to develop the script and send the script out to people, people, you know. People in America just didn't understand that this was a good thing. They're like, why would the mother do yeah. that? That's so cold, yeah. that's so callous. And we're like, no, this is an honorable thing because yeah. she's sacrificing everything she yeah. knows and loves. I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. And Lorraine Chisson, who plays the mom in the yeah. film, her mom did the same thing to her and left her in Trinidad when she was six years old and then set for her four years later. So we all really felt this experience. Honestly, like, but the thing is, talking about the beautiful parts, you know, is one thing. But I need to know, what was the most difficult part in filming? It's just really, it's the everyday. <laughs> oh, really? Could be because Chantel. <laughs> Would you like to tell me what the most difficult yeah. part was, please? What? <laughs> uh, you know, the I think the most difficult part for for Dale and I really was the the training process. Because it was really, it really took a toll, you know, on our bodies because yeah. we we're just like jumping in. It's not like we we're doing. I mean, Dale was an athlete before, but he paused for a while, and so and then Dale is really an Instagram, yeah, he's an Instagram, Instagram celebrity. celebrity. He wasn't an actor before, so okay. he, so it was very strategic in how Storm cast it. So yeah. he had a very strong supporting yeah. cast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're yeah, all yeah, there yeah. to kind of guide him yeah. and stuff and. Um, I think that was really. I didn't have. I don't. I didn't. I don't remember having bad days. Yeah. I remember having long days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. drinking a lot of coffee. <laughs> I remember one time I was like, and the lady was like, "Shut up, you kill me. Okay, just sit here. Don't move. Don't move." But it was. It was a great experience. I enjoyed it. Yeah, the production process. I'd say the hardest thing was just keeping Dale focused because yeah. he's used to thirty second, yeah, sixty yeah. second clips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so at one point, I just had to start taking his phone away. Wow. Morning. And like we got to give it to him. It's almost like a gift. Like, all right, wow. he's phone you earned it. Because wow. he'd otherwise just be. He just lives uh, in But when that's all you, not that's all he knows. But when you might be used to the social media world, mm -hmm. listen, I run an Instagram page. So first thing in the morning, I wake up. I'm like. Let's just see if there's anything right. you were uh, before you can post on the you know I mean? And it becomes almost an addiction because it's part, quote unquote your job, but it's like an addiction too. So, and it's, it's, it's nice to hear that, you know, people who are in these positions struggle with the same things that we struggle with, you know what I mean? So you were giving his phone back at the end of the day. Was there any time that he was like, no, you can't take my phone? No. Okay. No. There were times where he was just being difficult because yeah. he missed his phone and wanted it yeah. back. In fact, the day, look, I can't tell what the scene's about, okay. but there's a day where David Allen Greer, who plays the coach in the film, really saved us because Dale was just so angry that we had Aww. taken his phone away and he just wasn't giving us the performance Aww. that we needed. And David's just out there cracking jokes, walking <laughs> around, doing his little stand-up set for us and keeping morale high while yeah. Storm and I are in the corner with Dale like, come on. <laughs> you got this, yeah. you got this. But yeah, during production that was the hard part. And then post-production the hardest part was just communicating what the certain elements of the culture that were in the script and that we had shot meant to Will and Jada's team and to Will and to Jada just because you know, they were like, oh, we don't need this scene, we can cut out. And I was like, no, you can't have a Jamaican film, for example, without a dance hall sequence. Yeah, of course. People are looking for this. And they're like, well, we have enough there. And I was like, no, no. We, we have to show this because it's not only the story of the brothers going on their journey and setting up the love interest and all that, but if you don't have, you get a Jamaican scene and people don't get to hear the dance hall yeah. music and see people dancing in yeah. the early and you know, just opposing that with when the kid 
you know, journey changes and having a sequence that matches that, it's just, the story's gonna fall flat yeah. from putting it together. So mm -hmm. for me, you know, my hardest part was just translating the culture back and forth because, you know, people growing up that grew up in North America, I was blessed, my parents forced me to grow up Jamaican. Yeah. And there's, you know, they're still in Jamaica and they just said like, you're Jamaican, you need to represent. Yeah, always, always. Now I have to ask, right? Is there a possibility of a sprinter too? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. Ah! Uh, actually, what's happening is there's a, you know, Storm and I are writing the series right now. Oh, you better stop it's, it. It's actually the spring of the series. No, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. nice. We, we announced it last week. We told people last week. See, here's the thing, yeah. right? I don't know. When I'm asking you questions, I'm literally asking you things that <laughs> I want to know. So I had no idea. Yes, we literally are, are taking meetings at the end of September in LA to talk about the series. It's not going to be a, a sequel, per se. It's yeah. going to be a TV series. That is, yeah. that is dope. That is sick. Yeah. That is... Oh, okay. All right. We're, we're definitely here for that. Definitely, definitely here for that. When does it drop in the UK, though? Friday, September 6th. September 6th. And it's, ama it's an amazing thing that's come together. You know, so my background is film distribution and production. Yeah. And in the UK, it was really hard. People just didn't understand, just normal distributors just didn't understand how they were going to market this. Yeah. And so I had met Femi and Nikki yeah. and Marlon at Kush Films and Justine Atkinson at Aya, and I kind of just put together my own Avengers. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I've got these five people that all represent different demographics yeah. in the UK, and we have over 50 theaters that we're going to oh, across the entire crazy. country, which is crazy That's for a crazy. film that, you know, literally, you know, just was grassroots built up between Storm and I, you just grown it for four years, so. That is crazy. It's, honestly, I just feel like, not just the story is inspiring, but the, your stories right here are inspiring because, like I said earlier, people always think, you know, you do something today and tomorrow it comes out and you're mega be successful straight away. But all these things are a process. All of these things take work. They take connections. And it's that's a... Oh. <laughs> I wish I had like the, like, the sound effect, but I'm lost. Nikki and Femi, did, we did a screening at, uh, what is it called? I think it's like a Soho House down yeah. in London. And in the Q&A, somebody was just like, Rob, how do you do this? Like, how do you put together a film of this scale? Yeah. And I was just, I don't really have an answer. I said, I just take every day by day with like my coffee and my heart <laughs> and my ha hands in my head and just like, <laughs> just like, all right, this is, this is what scares me the most today. So I have to cross this off the list yeah, first. 100%. And then then I check in with my, my partner, I check in with Storm and I'm like, yo, what do we have to take care of? And then just keep pushing every day. And you know, every day is a journey it's just like, one more week to go. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, he's always so graceful. Like, I'll be freaking out. And I call him, he's like, hey. <laughs> I'm like, why are you so bubbly all the time? I appreciate you. Oh, no, like a week ago, though, you were like, uh, Rob, this is the first time I've yes. ever heard you sound stressed. Oh, <laughs> for the what? first time okay. in three years. <laughs> now, you might not be able to divulge to me, but can you tell me why were you stressed? Oh, I mean, we're doing this in like three countries simultaneously and what? I'm literally the person that I do the creative and I do the business, right? So I have to be juggling all of it and I'm literally a one man team. Yeah. Like, that's it. And so, and I'm trying to get her travel sorted and oh everyone get it. Yeah. I'm, doing, I'm doing immigration law. No, so good. <laughs> I'm doing so good. Yeah. 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 I'm handling visas. And he's done this before because in, when, when were you in London? February of this yeah. year, we, the screen was showing in three cities simultaneously. Yeah, so we were in so Toronto, LA. So they had to LA. send me to Toronto. They came to London yeah. and it was in yeah. LA. And all three screenings were sold out. Yep, 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 come on. Well, you don't have to be stressed on that note. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta play a track, but you mentioned this word earlier because you like a lot of coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm to make some coffee toast. And then there might be an exclusive, right? Uh -huh. Oh, that's what we like to hear. Do not go anywhere. They're not leaving me yet. I'm going to squeeze out as much juice of our sprinter as possible before it lands in the UK on the 6th of September. So here is coffee and toast. And we back. We back. We back in the building. Shut, 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 shut. So I think that's going to do it with me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are looking at me like, oh, what is she singing? But okay. Right, so. Rob yeah. and Chantel, i got a couple of questions still. Now, we've spoken about Sprinter in detail. We've spoken about the film itself, the inspirations. 
But I just know about the music side of things, man. Talk to me. Oh man, the music was a journey actually because we were just talking about that cranium track. Yeah. Originally, they're supposed to be uh, that song. Nobody, nobody. Has I to don't stop with me. Like, <laughs> my song. Hey, nobody help me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, because the film's about a young boy who becomes, like, the hot thing. Yeah. And so one of the themes or lessons is, you know, whatever happens with you and somebody else, mm -hmm. you got to keep between mm -hmm. you and yourself. You'll see that. You'll see <laughs> yes. that. And so uh, we really wanted to have that song, but by the time we knew the movie would be coming out, yeah. it was going to have been so long. Yeah. So uh, so we don't have that track, but we do love Cranium. Yeah, uh, we do love Cranium. But Alkaline Champion Boy is on Jeez. there. Kabaka Pyramid gave us two songs. Sencia has a song by herself, okay. and the big song is Neo and Sencia tag teaming on a song. It'll be out. Soundtrack drops on September 20th. The first song is dropping on September 6th, uh, Kabaka Pyramid, and it's, yeah, it's called Holding On. It's a beautiful, beautiful song. It's the song that opens the film, and so that's dropping this Friday. It'll be available anywhere you get music. My mouth is open right now. I actually like it's sore. <laughs> but how easy would you say it was to decide who to feature on the soundtrack? Because there are a lot of amazing dance hall bashment artists and Neo. Yeah. Like, how did this all happen? How, how easy was it to decide? Who? Again, <laughs> it's, uh, we literally didn't close the the Neo deal. He and I met, yeah. talked, we met. Two years ago at ABFF, and uh, we were talking about it, and I told him about the film. He came and saw a very early screening, yeah. and the next thing I knew, his management hit me and said, hey, we got two songs for you guys. Stop it. <laughs> and, Stop it. But they literally didn't sign that contract until two weeks ago. <laughs> Stop it! Oh, okay. This, well, honestly, this, this show this world is not easy, is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but, uh, but yeah, it's a great song, and it's about a big moment in the film. I won't okay. give it away, okay. but, uh, you know, Shensia, is amazing. Yeah. And you guys hear her yeah, 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 in the yeah. film. It's just like you can't help it. You just get okay. amped up. Okay. And so, yeah, it's just been a journey. Deciding what song to choose is really just the question. Yeah, we really want to have some songs from Demarco. Yeah. Because uh, he's actually in the film. He plays mm -hmm. the villain in the film. Mm -hmm. Oh no way! Yes. Yeah. Yes. In bad. Yeah. Tony <laughs> Yeah, he's really bad. Yeah, but, but it's just. I never knew he was an actor. Well, this is his well. big screen debut. Cha Ching Ching's in the film. Cha Ching Ching does all the radio drops on the film. <laughs> people, remember, people might not even know it's him, but Cha Ching Ching literally came in and did a day with us in the studio and did all those ad libs and then hosted a party that's in when, in the film as well. Uh, so there's a lot of artists that actually contributed that's, to that. Honestly, that's sick. It, you know when people say for the culture? Yeah. It, it sounds like it. Like, like, everyone who's involved is. Oh, it's authentic. Yeah, yeah. Our, our supporting male, Kadeem Wilson, uh, also known as Kendrick Official, he plays live acoustic in the film, and his that same song, Lionheart, is actually on the soundtrack as well. And he's That's just his a, song. Yeah, he's yeah. just a multi hyphenate. Oh, so, talent. so he talented. Talent. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, Same okay. dance, act, everything. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And Ga oh, we have a British artist. I can't even forget. We have a British artist. Yeah. Gaika is on uh, the soundtrack. Gaika is like a trippy, kind of reminds me of like uh, Tricky, actually. I know it. He's a British artist who I met at a film festival four years ago, just sitting at a bar in Miami. Oh, and we just started talking, he's like, oh yeah, I'm a musician, no big deal. Oh, and, then, right and then that night I went to a party and his band was playing the party and I was like, oh, and I love the sound. <laughs> and his record label, Warp, got behind the film really early and then they brought on Boiler Room and they're, they're hosting events this week yeah. to try and get, build the buzz. And he's, a, he's an amazingly talented artist and just so, well, he saw the film and he was just like, wow. This is City of God for yeah. the UK generation. Yeah, 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 yeah. People need to see this film. Yeah. Whatever you need, yeah. I got you. And uh, it's that kind of just communal support from yeah. people in the yeah. culture. His parents are Jamaican, but he grew up here. And he was just like, I got to make sure people understand this. The youth have to see this. Yeah. So. This is like a movement. It's yeah. sprint to the movement, not foot sprint to the film. I like that. Sprint to <laughs> the movement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> trademark, copyright. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm excited for it to come up because, like I said, from the trailers, I already knew I felt like it was like an epic kind of story. And I think it's something that, regardless of where you're from, you can appreciate the background of it, the meaning behind it. I think, yeah. Yeah, we, thank you. Yeah. It was important for us to defy stereotypes and, 100%. you know, for a Jamaican film not to be drenched in political, yep. you know, the political rivalries, 
or drug culture. Yeah, yeah. You know, I won't say there's zero bad because you can't no, have a movie if there's not good versus evil. Of course, of course. <laughs> it's like a fundamental. But there were no gunshots. Yeah. No, don't lie. Don't, don't was, ruin the movie for the people. No, I need to say <laughs> <laughs> there were no gunshots in the film. Are you serious? Yes. Yeah. See, that's one of my things. I always feel like there's so many stereotypes that I play to in different genres, like, you know, the, the British genre of urban films, the Jamaican genre of urban films, and I like when things go against that. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because there's so many stories we have. It's not all about us being gangsters and, yeah. you know. Well, people see the trailer and they expect one yeah. thing going into the movie, and I, actually I think people will have held back from going to the movie, and then they hear it's actually really yeah. good, and they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh, and then they realize that, we put that stuff in the trailer because we know that's what lures yeah. people in, but then when they get to the theater and they see, oh, it's not the bad line story. Jeez. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. September the 6th. Yeah. Yep. Everywhere across the UK. Crazy. Guys, I want you to do one favor. I want you to run down in, I'm going to give you each 20 seconds. I think I've got like a timer. Well, yeah. Can we tell everyone to follow us at Expert of the Film first? Oh, of course. Follow hashtags. Oh, no, 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 you can get that after. Don't worry, trust me, we ain't finished yet. But I'm going to have my timers. Wow, oh, she's literally going to time us. Oh, wow. <laughs> she's got, an, folks at her at home, she's got an hourglass as right. big as sand. It's different colors. Hmm. <laughs> we'll go for the 30 second one. Oh, wow. And I'm going to give you 30 seconds each to convince everyone why they need to go and watch Sprint on it. I knew it was going to say ladies first, you know, but the I'm other. happy to go first if you need a moment to think. <laughs> we'll make Rob go first. You go first. Right. Ready? Okay. Good. Okay, I'm ready. Go. go. All right, here's why you guys need to see Sprinter the film. If you guys are looking for a film that has, if you're a former athlete, if you love your family, if you want to see something that you've never seen and you want to see Usain Bolt even larger than life, that's just one reason. Those are three reasons right there. Beyond that, this film really touches on Caribbean culture and is the set starting of a movement, as you've you heard here. Sprint of the film challenges every stereotype you've ever thought about Jamaicans and the Caribbean, and it's just getting started. Oh, 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 <laughs> just to support us and you want to see that and experience it then you definitely need to see Sprinter if you love Sprinter you definitely need to see Sprinter if you love Alkaline and all the people that want to see Sprinter <laughs> and I will add that you know Angela Yee said that this was the best sex scene she's seen in a film oh my oh. gosh so, wow there's also that if you're into that there's oh, a scene listen. that's <laughs> wow. something for everybody right? oh, yeah <laughs> But guys, before we go and before we play our exclusive, could you do me a favor and remind everyone how to find you, follow you, and support the movement? All right, so you guys can buy tickets now, www.sprintofthefilm.com, and we are on all the social channels, Sprint of the Film, at Sprint of the Film, hashtag Sprint of the Film. Get behind it, support it, and investment in this film, buying your tickets, bringing people to see it, is an investment in the community, is an investment in us, this is a product that can literally change an entire region and the way people look at a region and the way that people think about the arts coming out of it. Everyone knows Jamaica for music. We're about to take over movies too. Same. Yep. Listen, before we play the exclusive, I'm going to play a track that you wanted to have on, but you didn't. So, <laughs> oh, is, it, is it a crazy? Is it a crazy? <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I love it so much. When you said that, I was like, we have to play it. So here is Cranium and nobody has to know. Right? 